This episode of Live WP TV is sponsored by the Microsoft Nerd Center in Cambridge and HostGator.com. Beginner section, a session in there and the advanced one in here. Uh, so Kurt's in there setting up right now. So you're going to have to deal with me and Eric today. Which is the beginner and which is the advanced? Um, I forget the topics. Beginner's typography. I think so, typography's in there. And uh, I'll get to that in a second. So if you guys are on uh, Wi-Fi, uh, the code is WP0218. Uh, the network's Cambridge. It's always just WP in the date, but we'll remind you every time. Um, and we have a website. We actually have a website. So uh, check it out. It's, it's pretty bare bones right now. We'll continue to update it. And uh, it's pretty community driven. So you guys feel free to dive into it, create a profile, start uh, communicating, and then um, Hopefully, we'll get that whole thing back up and running and back to what it was. So uh, first off, uh, thanks to Microsoft Nerd for uh, letting us do this um, every month, not last month, but usually they're, they're great. They let us use whatever we want, basically. Um, and uh, we've been doing it since 2009. Uh, we also use HostGator for our own hosting. Uh, we recommend a couple different hosts, but uh, if you're going to use HostGator, Use our code to sign up at the bottom, Boston WP Meetup. Uh, it's pretty affordable hosting. They have one click WordPress install, so if you're trying to get up and running on WordPress, it's a pretty easy way to get started. Uh, and starting uh, this month, actually, we now have a new host, WP Engine, is uh, helping us out as well for the next couple of months. Um, if you haven't heard of WP Engine, they are a managed WordPress host, so they deal with all of the server-side things. You sign up, you just get WordPress. And they deal with scaling it and backing it up and all of that sort of fun. Um, they have been gener generous enough to support us not only with the sponsor code there, but also financially. So going forward for the next few months, we will have pizza, uh, thanks to WP Engine. Um, and there's a, a sponsor code at the bottom there that will get you a free month of their hosting if you guys want to try out uh, WP Engine, see what it's all about. Um, if you've been uh, around the community for a little while now, they've been really great about supporting WordCamps and meetups and things like this, and they're making it a more concerted effort to support meetups, so we're really happy to be one uh, during this trial program that they're doing, so it's really great for us because we can guarantee that there will be food and things like that. And just out of curiosity, did anybody get a free account at this past uh, WordCamp? Yes, I did. Awesome. So yeah, uh, they're great. If you get a chance, please check them out Free month. Um, a lot of cool features in the back end that kind of make them a little bit different. Uh, totally worth it. Um, Uh, so Jared, who will be presenting in here, um, is from Upstate. They sponsored the pizza tonight. Uh, they're a local company that uh, has worked with the Boston Globe. If you've seen the Boston Globe responsive site, they worked on that. Um, Jared's going to talk more about them, um, but we're really grateful to them for pizza tonight. <laughs> It was down as of like a half an hour, hour ago. So we officially have the new site up. It is responsive, so you can check it out right now on your phone. Um, we will update it with some of the previous meetups uh, with videos and stuff so you guys can get caught up. Um, we've been a little out of it. We haven't, this is our first meetup in a little while, so there's not too much to update. But um, it also has job boards. And in a second, I'll open it up for people to kind of shout out any job opportunities you guys might have. But on top of that, I recommend checking this out and listing your job there. And we're going to try and make a big push in that section of the site. So it's a, <clears throat> sorry, it's a great place to get your uh, WordPress job out there. Uh, we have forums on there. Uh, start playing with them. Like I said, we went live an hour ago. So if there's some uh, bugs, uh, just let us know. But uh, it, it should be good to go. And uh, GitHub, if you... Um, we've, we've talked about this a bit before. We have a GitHub account now where we can start... Uh, putting uh, people's projects on there, and we have some of our own projects. And we're probably going to put uh, this theme on there as well, some of the modifications we're making to it. So feel free to just check it out. And if anyone has a WordPress project they want to get up on there just to get a little bit more exposure and uh, maybe get some feedback, uh, just reach out to me or Cadam, and we'll, uh, we'll get it up there for you guys. 
So uh, the Boston WordPress Meetup were still the uh, second largest WordPress Meetup in the world. With I, I, I don't know if that number's been updated, but 1,650 plus members uh, still uh, falling behind New York. So uh, tell your friends, and we can beat them. Um, we asked for help in the past, and we got it. Uh, hopefully this next slide has. Oh, it does. So uh, first in the back, we have Tom and Rego. They've been, they've been helping out uh, for the past a couple of years already. Um, you've probably seen them around, but they handle the video side of things, as well as a lot of other stuff behind the scenes. We're very grateful to have them helping us. Um, so thank them if you can. Um, Eric, uh, another one that's been been around behind the scenes, uh, helping us out for a while. So he made it official, and he's going to help us kind of, you know, turn us into something bigger and better. Cadam, uh, he's uh, helped me get the website up a little bit while ago, and uh, organizing some other really cool things. So um, really excited to have him around. Uh, Jesse, who's not here right now, uh, I think if you were here last month, our last meetup, you uh, saw his talk. Uh, which was great, he gave away a lot of free stuff. But uh, we're happy to have him. And uh, we have two other organizers in the back. Uh, Kurt, why don't you come up here? Let you finish. All right, and so we're adding two more organizers, and I didn't have time to add them on the slide. We're also adding Kelly. Kelly's right there. And we're also adding Mel. Yeah, let's give him a talk on the other side. <laughs> So um, another general upcoming WordPress event, uh, it's, it's still kind of close to us, so this is still probably the, the primary, the bigger <coughs> Boston WordPress uh, meetup, but if you are in the Bedford area, there's a smaller uh, WordPress meetup kind of happening, um, so you can go and support them. Uh, just another way to get your WordPress on. Uh, so, do uh, you want to talk about this? Sure. Uh, so, on March 2nd, that's the date, uh, we are going to run a hack day, and what the point of this is, uh, is to give back to WordPress Core for 3.6. Hey, there we go. Um, the site, the uh, RSVP is up on Eventbrite, but this is going to be an entire day at uh, Boku's space uh, where we're just working on patches for 3.6. So if you've ever been interested in contributing to Core, but haven't really known how to get started, where, uh, what would be a good use of your talents, we will have uh, tickets picked out uh, from Mark Jacob, actually, who's going to put some stuff together for us. And we're going to spend a day just working on writing patches, contributing to uh, WordPress Core. So if you want to get your name on 3.6, uh, this is a great way to get started with that and really see what the process is like to become a contributor to WordPress. It doesn't have to be anything major. My first contribution was adding a check if you were in the admin on something. My contribution in 3.5, I added a value to an array. So we're not talking about really uh, groundbreaking things here to get started, but it's a great way to get hooked into uh, WordPress and really know what's coming in the next release and be able to influence uh, what uh, is being added. So again, uh, that's March 2nd, 10 a.m. at uh, Boku Loft. And if you're interested, you can RSVP on uh, Eventbrite site that's linked there. We've also got it linked up on the Meetup site as well. Um, and we, are, we already have limited space for that, so uh, we prefer at this point, if you already have some experience with WordPress, if you RSVP, just so that uh, the, the developers that really want to be part of this can, and we'll be reminding people about the, you know, what, what we're actually going to be tackling so that everybody feels comfortable actually coming into the event. Um, but if you have any questions, uh, you can talk to Mel. Uh, she did a great job organizing all of that. Um, so, thank you. Uh, so, we also have another beginner's workshop coming up at uh, Tech Day Camp. We did this a little while ago, and a couple times, and it's always great. Um, it's in Franklin, Mass. on March 23rd. Uh, you can see Tom and Rico for more information. Um, it's basically a, you know, around three hours uh, beginner workshop. We kind of go over all of the basics, and it's kind of a, a great way to get up to speed on it's everything that you need to know to use WordPress efficiently. Um, we cover a lot in that span, so I uh, highly recommend it if you can. Um, if you have any other questions, you can talk to Tom and Rico. Um, they have that all kind of uh, figured out. And they have brochures. We have flyers. 
and flutters. Uh, other WordPress meetups. Um, so this is an actual official WordPress meetup up in, Man up in uh, Manchester, New Hampshire. So if you guys can, uh, if you're in that area, you can make it up there. Um, we have someone here. Do you want to talk about it for uh, a second or two and pitch your meetup? Uh, real quickly, we just had our first uh, sort of relaunch meetup. Uh, was it January 31st? We're going to have our next one on uh, second Monday of March, whatever date that is. So check out their meetup page. Come on, um, come all. We're meeting at a restaurant called The Farm in downtown Manchester. So check out their meetup meet page on RSVP and uh, uh, yeah. Uh, also down in Providence, Rhode Island. Um, we actually just they just recently had their work camp. Uh, it's a really cool community down there. Uh, if you see Jesse around here at future meetups, talk to him. Uh, otherwise, we'll have his email and contact information up on the Boston WP website soon. So you can contact him through there, but they also have their own meetup page. Uh, but there's a very, very cool WordPress community down there. So if you're ever in the area or you want to check out something different, um, it's an awesome meetup. On the Providence meetup note, it's not been fully confirmed yet, but it's likely that the next meetup is going to be on the 5th of March and is going to be relating at least in part to SAS and LESS and CSS preprocessors. So any questions? So we're going to, uh, oh, I just, one more thing, actually. I want to just let people, if you have any job opportunities you want to shout out quickly, we usually do try this before because um, everyone kind of scrambles after the fact. But if you have anything WordPress related that you're looking for developers, now's a good time. Just raise your hand and speak. Uh, what would you got? So um, my name is Patrick Richardson. I work for Oomph. Um, we have a couple guys here from Oomph as well. We're looking for JavaScript uh, developer, PHP, MySQL developer. So if you're interested, stop by and uh, see me after. Well then, I have a very small job that I need some help with. It's for direct custom directory. Um, so if anybody is interested in working on a little project with me, I'd really appreciate it. My name is James, and I'm a designer. I've developed the WordPress for our clients, and I'm oftentimes asked to customize thematic themes that are commercially available. So anybody that uh, does that on a freelance basis should come and find me. I'm really tall and easy to find. Uh, let's see. Is that coming through? Um, OK, either way, I talk loud. so. And as I mentioned before, I'm Jared. I'm here with Upstatement, and we're sponsoring the pizza for this time around. So I, I, I bought a few minutes of attention. Um, so in case you haven't heard of us, um, something that we are known for. First off, we've got an excellent, excellent office in South Boston. Beautiful. It's got three window views of the waterfront district, and we are looking for designers to come and fill some empty seats because we've got a lot of exciting projects coming up over the next couple months um, and really looking for some talented team members to join us. Um, you might have heard of us from the Boston Globe project, which we did about a year and a half ago. And that was one of the first sites um, to use responsive in a big way. So obviously in that time, we've been working on not only perfecting that, um, but a lot of cool, exciting uh, design techniques, methodologies, and also just uh, an awesome team of people to come work with. Uh, so come see me after to talk about either what I'm talking about tonight or opportunities at Upstatement, in case you're interested. All right. So uh, everybody that just had a job announcement um, could also go on the website, list it there. If you have any problems, uh, email myself or one of us, and we'll get up there for you. Uh, and lastly, we're going to be doing um, a very basic happiness bar. If you guys have any questions about your own WordPress sites, uh, and you want to pop out of your session for a little bit, uh, at least myself will be out there and we'll pull the guys out there if we need them. All right. Uh, so we'll have Jared's talk here. We're actually going to have Mel's talk right next door since we have the room available. Um, rather than pull the dividers, you know, give people some extra room and some extra spaces all around. So, uh, yeah. Anything else? Thanks, guys. Do your thing. You want to repeat the blurbs for the two talks? 
Oh, uh, <laughs> just can't pull it up on. Yeah, yeah, you're gonna get the slides, but you can just read off. <laughs> I thought it was gonna be on the slide. That's why. Oh, sure. Thank you. So, so Mel is. Mel is uh, web typography, uh, WordPress and beyond. And Jared is talking about templates. Uh, that are broken. Yes. WordPress templates that are broken. So this is Jared's talk is a little bit more dev oriented. Mel's is going to be a little bit more beginner intermediate. Right. Cool. So hi there. I'm still Jared. Um, Hi, Jared. Should we go through the, the previous slides again, or we're good on the logo we're good. stuff? We're good. Um, so, as I mentioned, um, I think that the project we're no most known for is our work on both BostonGlobe.com. Um, and I think one of the reasons for that is our background, and this is myself, I'm one of the partners of Upstatement. Uh, my two other partners are actually somewhere in the audience tonight. But, um, we all came from newspapers, um, and we all worked at these papers before starting uh, the Upstatement Company. Um, and we worked primarily on in the design departments and in the web departments. Um, and me specifically, um, one of the things I worked a lot on was developing tools and systems that would make um, what we were doing easier for our producers to work with. So for example, this is something I worked on for Boston.com, and it was a system to let the editors and producers, you know, the journalists, easily create multimedia content like locator maps and photo galleries and interactive slideshows. Um, so a lot of the work I've done, both at Upstatement and kind of my prior career working in newsrooms, has been about figuring out better systems for people to do their work. Um, so the system that I'm most familiar with recently is WordPress. And one of the things I've learned in working with WordPress enough is that WordPress templates are broken. Um, and what tonight's talk is going to be about is why they're broken, um, but more importantly, how to fix them. Uh, because at Upstatement, we do a lot of design and development work. And when we develop, we found that WordPress is an awesome, awesome tool to make things happen. So um, just to make something clear, because I will be throwing down like a lot of WordPress hate over the next hour or so, is that I love WordPress. Uh, there's a reason I'm here tonight. Um, in fact, my girlfriend actually works for Automatic slash WordPress. Uh, she couldn't be here tonight, um, but she gave me some free t-shirts to give out at the end. Um, but anyway, I, I love WordPress. I, one of the things I love is like the admin interface, for example. It, it's a beautiful and clear way for people who aren't familiar with HTML to have a really great portal into editing their blog or really editing any type of content. This is a site we're working on where uh, writers have to edit things like their book lists and, and their tweets. So the WordPress interface gives people a great command um, of their sites, something to love. Another thing to love is that it's so easy to get started. Um, so many other systems have a steep and imposing learning curve, basically saying, you know, you are not welcome here. And what I love about WordPress is that this community really welcomes people into it. You know, you've got WordPress.com, where you can launch a blog in a minute. You can take your content over to WordPress.org, where you're ready to do self-hosting. From there, you can go plug-in shopping and you know grab every feature and add-on to add to your site. Um, it's not too hard from there to begin customizing and writing your own theme. And in maybe a year or two's time, you find that you're writing plugins. Um, and that's something that I think is really special about WordPress. Before WordPress, I worked in Drupal, and it is not this friendly. It's got a huge, scary learning curve. Yes, exactly. That makes it really tough to, to get started. Um, and of course, one of the best things about the WordPress ecosystem is that sharing component. Um, there is so much sharing that goes on inside of the WordPress world, whether it's code or whether it's just tips and tricks on how to, you know, when it comes to typing in, you know, when you have a problem trying to you know, fetch the tags for a particular post, you go to Google, you type WordPress, you know, retrieve tags, get tags. Someone else has had your same exact problem, and odds are pretty good that someone else has also found the answer for you. Amazing, amazing feature of this world that we get to work in. Um, another really cool thing about WordPress is this idea of a template hierarchy. And I think many people might understand this, but I still want to go through this real quick. And that is when you open up 
your theme folder, you've got anywhere from maybe a dozen to two dozen different PHP files. And all of them correspond to a different page on your site. Of course, some of them do double duty, where your index.php, for example, is where everything will go to if it can't find a specific home. You've got, of course, your home.php. So if you want a specific page for your home page, you can edit or create this file. And WordPress, you know, when you go to upstatement.com, for example, is going to use home.php to provide the content and logic for that. Um, specific pages, you know, when you go to the admin interface and create a page, they use the page template. But when you have a specific page, like maybe the about page on your site, you do page dash about. So this is a built-in part of WordPress, and I think a really um, smart set of architecture that makes creating, modifying, theming, and extending your site a really easy place to start from. Um, and it goes on to, you know, single.php is your blog post. If you have a specific content type, like on Upstatement, we have portfolio pages, single-portfolio. Um, very smart, very well organized. The problem comes when you need to actually open and edit one of these files. So let's get started and uh, theming these. So if you were to open up one of these files, this is the loop from the default WordPress theme. I think it's either 2010 or 2011. This is what you get. And speaking back to when we were talking about kind of easy learning curve, you know, friendly to people just getting started, this is not friendly. This is really, really scary. And even though I've been working pretty regularly with WordPress for the last two or three years, I still look at this and, and can't have any real sense of what is going on here. Uh, and I'm not cherry picking. Um, these are the default WordPress themes. This is uh, either 2011 or 2012. 2012? 2010. 2010. Content.php. Uh, again, it, it's a scary place to start from. Do you want to turn the lights down there? Oh. What do you think? Yeah. yeah. Awesome. A little better. So when we're mixing together what we see in here, we've got mixtures of WordPress calls, we've got mixtures of PHP variables and if statements and HTML. Uh, the word that sometimes comes up is spaghetti, where you're mixing all these different elements together and having a really hard time detangling what belongs to WordPress and what belongs to the user, you know, the HTML that someone is actually going to see. So in a lot of other, let's call them programming worlds, like Ruby on Rails, uh, Django, um, one of the various like PHP frameworks, or even something like Node.js, I'll, I'll talk to a developer, I meet at like a party or something, and, and they kind of have a very high mind of what they use. You know, they are, they are Ruby people, and they are Ruby people to the bone. And the fact that you deal with WordPress is, oh, that's kind of like a kid's language or something. Um, and I think there is a little bit of truth to that, where they have a few things, well, they have two important things that WordPress lacks. One is a really high learning curve to exclude people from learning Ruby. <laughs> but another thing they have, and this is a good one, is a template language. It's a really good way of separating what is the Django logic from the Django display. So I kind of first became acquainted with uh, templating languages this summer when I was working on a, a JavaScript project for like a medical client. So they were providing us like medical data inside of JSON files, and we needed to read that. So instead of trying to read that file via Ajax and then writing in some markup directly into JavaScript, what we could do is put that markup into a separate template, and using Hogan JS or Handlebars, these are again JavaScript templating languages, tell JavaScript where we wanted those variables to end up. What that actually looks like is something like this. So you've got you know HTML, divs, h1s, classes, IDs should be really clear. The difference that one of these template languages introduce are these like curly braces. This is a, a really common convention, and that's where like handlebars or mustache come from, or the look of those curly braces. So you're substituting in, you know, whatever that title is that's passed from that JSON file, or whatever content comes over from the body um, 
on the page or, or from whatever that data source happens to be. And I looked at this and I thought, all right, wait a second, this looks really familiar. Because if I open up single PHP, single dot PHP rather, in a WordPress theme, I might see something like this. You've got this kind of PHP magic going on, but then you've got my div tags, my H1 tags, and then those PHP calls to retrieve the title or retrieve the body from WordPress. So this looks really familiar, but it's still too complicated. And I thought, well, why can't this look like this? Very, very similar, but I think the syntax is a lot cleaner and it removes a lot of the other confusion that's going on. So a little bit of a sidetrack. This comes up, I think, in every single WordPress talk I've been to, and that's this idea of MVC. So I'm going to blaze through it real quick. Um, MVC, Model View Controller. It's this idea in programming of simplifying your code by separating out components. Um, so M is like the model. So this is like the data. View, what it looks like. Controller, logic, that puts them all together. So two second summary, um, but I just wanted to think about what this means for WordPress. And in WordPress, what this means is the model is that WordPress database. Check. That view, the PHP files inside the theme folder. So remember single.php, loop.php, home.php, makes sense. Then the controller then, oh, is also the PHP files inside of that theme folder. So this is where we've got two different responsibilities fighting over the same territory. And we get things like this. And, and this is bad. And I think this is bad for WordPress developers, people like me. Um, it's bad for beginners, people just getting started. And this, I think, is really important because when you're just getting started, and first off, you have something like this. This is, this is a lot to sort through to kind of figure out where you should be inside of your files if you want to get started and get to edit. Um, it's also really scary, again, when you're developing your first theme, you forget a semicolon, you forget a closing parenthesis, and you get this. And maybe you know to, oh, okay, I need to check the PHP error log on my server, or if I'm running MAMP, maybe it's somewhere deep inside of the applications file, and you can figure out, you know, T variable on line 62. But this doesn't tell you that. Um, it's bad for experts, maybe like a lot of people in this room, because your code is a mess. And, and this is my code. This is not even old. This is like a year ago. And it's really bad. This is just me trying to figure out how to display a byline on the article of a website. And you can tell. It's, you've got some if statements. You've got H3s there, but echoing here. Uh, it's a big, big old mess. Um, and that's really bad for collaboration, because when I was working on this particular project, I was working with one of the designers at our company. Uh, this guy, John, awesome, awesome designer, you know, able to navigate HTML and CSS. But when you start talking to him about echo statements and if statements, it's a different world. And I don't want to spend his time learning the WordPress codex and learning PHP. I want him to spend his time being an awesome, awesome designer. So this makes collaborating with him really tough because I have to tell him to make an HTML file and then detangle it into the PHP pieces in order to make the final product. Ultimately, this is all bad for WordPress because going back to that Ruby snob that I met at the party, this is what's in their head when they find out that you're a WordPress developer. All right, so enough of bad talk. Let's fix it. So. As I mentioned before, handlebars, uh, Hogan, Mustache, those are JavaScript um, templating languages. As it turns out, there is a very similar one out there called Twig. Twig um, is for PHP. It's got beautiful syntax. Um, it's got awesome, awesome documentation, which I think is maybe the single most important part of choosing what language to work in. Um, another thing, great thing about Twig is like Hogan or like Mustache, it comes from the real world. It's actually the same syntax as 
Django's templating language ported into PHP. So over the last I've been working with Twig and figuring out how we can get this to integrate with WordPress because Upstate is growing, we want to develop more sites, and we want to really help that collaboration happen. So what we've come up with is the idea of combining Twig and WordPress, and we call it Timber for, you know, like Twig. Anyway. Um, so the idea... Besides just putting Twig and, and WordPress next to each other, a little more engineering had to be done. So, again, in that normal WordPress theme folder, you're going to have that one single.php file doing double duty. In a Timber theme, what we've done is we've, we've isolated single.php, and we said, okay, you are going to be in charge of all of the logic. You're going to be the one that talks to the WordPress database, you know, retrieves our content, retrieves the tags we need, and you're going to send that somewhere. <coughs> you're going to send it to an HTML file that's actually going to figure out what tags that content needs, what classes, what IDs, um, the ultimate display that goes around it, so that when I'm working with John, he can work in that HTML file, I can work in the PHP file, and they'll just magically work together. So I want to emphasize this isn't just a theoretical thing that we've come up with. Um, we've used this already on the upstatement.com website. Um, and I thought, rather than just keep talking, I would show a little bit of how that comes together and what that actually looks like. So, if I were to go to, huh, jump ahead, statement.com, and go to our blog page. All right, so we've got a listing of our recent featured blog posts and underneath <coughs> other blog posts. So I'm going to click through to one of these and actually switch over to my local version. So this is what we're going to be building, which has you know, the full content of the blog post, as well as this banner image and some other stuff. So if I go to localhost right now, all right, sorry, no content, everything is blank. So I want to start and just show you guys where I'm working from. So in inside of my themes folder, I've downloaded a copy of Timber, which I'll show you where that lives in a second. And inside, um, you know, we've got a number of different files, those PHP files that handle the logic. We've also got this views directory, which you can see has HTML files that roughly correspond to what you see in PHP. You know, we've got things like home.html, footer.html, single.html, uh, and then this guy based on HTML. So a really powerful part of Twig and indeed many templating languages is this idea that instead of each time starting from scratch, you have a base.html, which is the style for 80% you know, of your site, you know, the nav, the sidebar, the header, the footer, and you can extend upon that for each individual page. So right now, if I look at single.html, it's nothing but an extend statement where it is pulling in this base.html file, and now we're going to customize it. So to customize it, I want to insert some content into this sorry, no, no content zone. And to do that, what we tell it is, okay, this, this syntax I'll, I'll get to a little bit later, but using these um, brace and parentheses, I'm talking to Twig and I'm saying, okay, whatever was in content before, I want you to replace it with what I'm about to tell you. So if I save that and go back over, okay, everything's gone because right now it's just displaying this empty H1. Of course, oh, I don't want this to be an MTH1. I want this to have the information from the blog post. So to ex or to send a variable, to display a variable, sorry, with twig, you do double braces and then the name of the variable. In this case, it's post.post_title. post underscore title. 
And if you've worked much with the WordPress API, API post underscore title should be pretty familiar. That's what WordPress identifies as the title to every blog post or the title of any content type, really, that you have stored. So I'm going to save, and when I refresh, okay, so now that title is coming across, being displayed, and you can see I've got this, uh, I think it's a Dell font, because I've classed this with article H1, which means it's getting all of the proper style sheets um, from our CSS. A question in the back. Can you show base.html real quick so you see the context? Sure. So base.html is what all of this is building off of. It itself is including this HTML header. You know how sometimes you'll see like a WP underscore head call, which kind of contains like all the garbage? Um, no point in, I can show that as well, no point in dealing with all this, like the meta tags, uh, type kit config, uh, doc types. So I've broken that out into its own file to be included later on. So base.html has those building blocks that, again, we need on every page. I need the upstatement logo on every page. I need the header. I need the navnet. What I don't know if I need is that main content area. So that's this block content zone that you see from 19 to 33. I don't know what's going to be there, so what I've actually done is just put a default message of sorry, no content, which is why we saw that earlier. Uh, if I had a sidebar, I might see it there. And include footer.html means, okay, we're pulling the footer with you know, our uh, address and email address and phone number and all that. So that base.html powers every page on the site. So when it comes to editing single.html, rather than copying and pasting that or even doing like four or five different include files, I'm able to just handle that separately and again, build on top of that inside that content zone. That's sort of the main area of the page here. Did that answer your question, kind sir? Yes. So okay. does, does the extend always overwrite the block section, only that section? Anything dynamic has to go in that section. It can go, you can define multiple blocks per page. So the fact that I've called it content um, <laughs> in base.html, I could call this Zebra, I could call it Jared, I could call it anything I wanted, and it's going to replace that content. So you can imagine that if on your particular site, maybe that sidebar changes for every different page, you could have a block sidebar as well um, and repopulate content into there instead of you're not locked into just content. So right now we, we've got the beginnings of this page. Um, need to go a little bit further and actually populate it with the full content. So I'm going to copy this and, uh oh, that's never supposed to happen. So not much has changed. I've, what I've basically done now is just added a bunch of HTML wrappers to pick up all the classes that the designer has set so that this sits on white, uh, sits kind of in this like 800 pixel content zone, and is going to be a little easier to read. Of course, the one thing that's missing is the actual content of this post. So let's add that in. So if I do post dot post underscore content. Again, you'll notice like the double braces because we're calling from Twig. Come over here and refresh. And now I've got the content of Tito's blog post piped into here. Um, now there's something that's not quite right. And, and something that WordPress does in a lot of themes that, that's really handy is when you're actually you know, you or maybe your client is editing this post and they're adding these returns for the paragraph breaks. You, know, you don't want to have them to deal with, oh, uh, every time you need to hit return, 
I need you to enter a closed P tag and an open P tag, and then they're going to ask, okay, what's an open P tag? Um, so one of the cool things that WordPress does is it will automatically add those paragraph breaks. So we should see a break after this typeface's question mark. Um, so to bring that over, Twig has this concept of this concept of filters that can change the content you give it. So in this case, that filter I want is WP Auto Uh Not my name, that's the name that WordPress gives it, so I wanted to follow that same convention. So I do that pipe and then <coughs> WP Auto P. It'll run my post content through that WordPress function. And now when I refresh, ah, you can see we get those P tags, which means we get the correct styling. We also get the correct line breaks so that all of the paragraphs that the, the writer has composed translate over successfully to the reader. Uh, so there's still some stuff missing on this page. Um, you'll remember when we actually looked at it on the live version, there is this big like banner image across the top of the page. So that's something that is actually not a default WordPress thing. We've actually added this like banner image content type um, using like a, a WordPress um, custom fields plugin. So I want that to come across. So I could guess at what that variable is, uh, but something that's really cool is I can actually tell Twig to export the full content of this post object to my page. So I can sort of like open up that box and see what's inside of it. So if I do post and then pipe and then print underscore a. Again, uh, print a is like a filter that we're running on our post object. I can look inside and see everything that WordPress is sending to this HTML file. So it's some stuff that might be useful, but not needed right now, like the actual ID number of the post, uh, the ID number of the post author. But what I'm really looking for is that banner image. So I do an Apple F and find banner. Okay, so banner image is 2956. So that doesn't make a lot of sense. And this is another thing that you might find yourself Googling for. How come my image is coming across as a number? Does anyone have any ideas? Exactly, it's the attachment ID. So unfortunately, WordPress is giving me just the number that refers to another post that stored that image. Um, so while we can prepare for some things, we can't prepare for all things. And rather than try to create a weird function that tries to be smarter than you, what I'm going to do is open up single dot PHP, I thought this would be a good chance to see what's going on inside of there. So what we're looking at, oh, that, yeah. um, so what we're looking at right now is just the raw building blocks of what it takes for WordPress to gather this information and send it over to that Twig template. Um, this data object is running this function called get context. And get context, it's this idea that every template has a context in the sense that it has like data that gives it information. So rather than doing this manually on every page, you run this function um, to gather some of your basic things like the title of the page, uh, the nav menu, things like that. The, mag the real magic that's happening is this line, line number 12, where Rather than going through the WordPress loop, in one line, using this Postmaster class, I'm converting what would otherwise be in the loop into a single object that can be sent to WordPress, or sorry, to the HTML file. So if that um, image right now is stored in banner image, but I need to retrieve that ID, unfortunately, I have to do a little programming. And this is that great break that happens where John, the designer, doesn't have to worry 
about the PHP, he can say, hey, Jared, uh, I dummied in an image. Can you get the actual image for me? And I would know that, OK, let's do a print R on data post. If I do a view source, banner underscore image, OK. So here it is as 2956. And let's grab that ID. Sequel to data. So that's grabbing that number 20956 or whatever. Next thing I want is to reassign it. Magic. Um, so what I did in this Postmaster class is I, I broke out a lot of common things I have to do. You probably have to do them as well as WordPress devs. For example, getting an image path from an attachment ID. So what I'm doing is I'm reassigning that image to the banner image. So now instead of at number, if I go to single.html and do that print A, and now banner image is equal to WP content uploads <clears throat> stage graphic.jpg. So now that that's there, I can. Insert an image tag, and again, nothing special here, but the source is now equal to post.banner underscore image. And we've got additional classes, and can even make an easy alt tag <clears throat> using the post title. Now, I've got that big image at the top. So now we've built the image. We've got all the content of the blog post. Uh, something that we want to do on this blog is, in addition to getting people to read the content of these entries, you know, to kind of help push them through the site is maybe give people a preview of our portfolio down here. So what I want to do is pluck a few portfolio entries um, from our portfolio page. So we've got these and insert them at the bottom of that of the blog page um, so that when someone gets here, they kind of have like a jumping off point into something else on the site. Uh, of course, Right now, we don't have any of that data. So this is, again, that example where, as the PHP developer, I'm the one that has to figure out, OK, let's retrieve that from the database. So inside of this data object, I'm going to add another thing for portfolio entries and set that equal to, again, using that same Postmaster class. And what I can do is just run a standard WordPress query inside of here. So in this case, it's post underscore type equals portfolio. And let's say rather than retrieve everything, I want to limit it to four recent things. So I'm going to do and number posts equals four. So you can look that up in like the WordPress codex. That's just standard query language for talking to the WordPress database. Retrieve stuff from the portfolio, but only retrieve four of them. So if I go back into my single.html, um, let's add a section under here. Call it portfolio entries. So you probably noticed there are two ways of talking to Twig at this point. We've got the double brace here when we need to export like a variable. 
Uh, but when we need to do something more complicated, like an extension or defining a block of content, I'm doing this like brace parenthesis. So in this case, when I'm fetching those, those portfolio entries, I'm not fetching one, I'm fetching four at a time. So I need to run a loop to go through all four of those and do something to display them. So if I do parentheses four, about post in portfolio entries, I'm just going to export the title of each of those and make sure that they're coming across appropriately. So if I refresh and go, go down to the bottom, OK, Northwestern University, Zine, Cato Institute. So those titles are, com are coming across from the database. Of course, I don't want this. I want that actual styled tile that we have on the portfolio page. So with just a little bit of pre-written HTML. I can bring that in. And it, again, this is all now using that same twig convention of like the double braces to designate the variables. Did you use a sub-template that? Uh, the question in the back was about <laughs> sub-templates. And uh, we will be getting to that in about 30 seconds. Um, so. Yeah, it's um, things like the, the post name, which is that slug name for it, the path where it should actually link to. We've got the thumb path for the image that someone's uploaded for the thumb preview. So all of that is coming across now and being displayed in the loop. So instead of this set of titles, when I refresh now, I actually see those title previews that uh, our designer has made to display the portfolio previews. So what's really cool about this, though, is we can take this a step further. And uh, Mark in the, bas in the back asked about sub-templates. Because I don't want to use these just here at the bottom of the page. When I go to, again, that upstatement portfolio, I want that same HTML to appear here. So rather than um, let's go to the archive template, or actually the index template. So this is the default index template uh, for Timber. Defines like the really simple like listing of things that you might find. And something that I always found was missing from WordPress, you know, you've got like different view types for like the singles. Um, but teases is something that comes back again and again that you need to create views for. So a tease, I would say, is like the like stub of something before you actually see it. In the case of the portfolio, it's like the square with the title underneath. Um, in the case of the blog, it's this square here that is kind of your entryway to hopefully click through to more and read the full entry. So again, you know, this kind of comes from our time working on news sites. Boston.com, you know, there was the idea of like you have the actual story, someone needs to write the actual tease that's going to get someone into that story. So I built that concept in here. So to get this page working, um, I'm going to edit tease portfolio. So tease.html would contain like the default tease information. And let me actually show you that real quick. I go to local host slash portfolio. So again, that default tease might just be like a listing of the title and a little bit of the text, which in this case isn't very much. But if I want to make one that's specific to my portfolio entries, again, I can follow some of the same conventions of WordPress and make a new file. And I'm going to save this as tease-portfolio.html. And now when I refresh, OK, 
now that HTML content is coming across. So what I'm going to do is go back to single.html where I was editing this, cut it from here, go back into T's portfolio, rather, paste it. And when I refresh, that HTML is coming across. But because the logic is different this time, instead of retrieving four entries, it's retrieving everything, I get that same display, but I'm able to reuse it for the archive page for the portfolio. Um, right now, though, when I go back to my blog post, that's disappeared. So to include that tease as a sub-template, again, I'm in single.html. Rather than repasting this and now having two places to maintain it, I can do a, a twig include for include tease dash portfolio HTML. So now he's going to pluck this file, use that content inside of the post object, and when I refresh, I get it there, and I should still get it when I go to the directory page. So those that is like the quick, what's quick now, about 25-minute demo into what this is, um, and a very basic implementation on how we've used it on the upstatement.com site. Um, um, but as I mentioned, we're not just using this kind of in our theoretical world or even just on our private world. We're using this with real clients uh, for real big sites. So right now, working on a, a, not really a site, but a series of sites for Random House. And something that Timber is letting us do is instead of making 50 different versions of a site with 50 different themes, we can use Timber to write one single PHP file and have a bunch of different HTML files correspond to it. So this project that we're working on, um, we're making a bunch of like uh, different themes for authors to easily make their own author websites. Again, instead of using writing it 50 different times, what we're doing is writing it once and just writing new HTML files for some of those different themes and different styles. Um, so to keep going with Twig, again, one of the great things is the documentation. Um, this presentation, as well as the Timber information, is posted at timber.upstatement.com, which redirects to our GitHub page. And so tonight's talk, we will add the link to it. Um, but all of these docs, or all of these links have great documentation on how to use Twig in your project, so you can take a little bit of what you've seen. Um, and, and there's a lot of great possibilities that they've built in. One of the great things about it is it doesn't tell you how to do it. Uh, it gives you a lot of options and opportunities to figure out the best ways for your workflow um, and your particular projects. And yeah, that's Timber. Again, timber.upstatement.com. Um, I'm Jared. Uh, this is our tweeting information. And thank you so much for letting me talk tonight. So, Adam. So I was just going to ask, I presume you're taking some questions. Yeah, let's do it. Awesome. Um, so this seems like it's really powerful and really awesome, and I like the way that it separates the concerns. But something you alluded to at the beginning was that you had broken out a lot of the stuff that would normally run um, either in your WordPress header template mm -hmm. into another file. Um, and then you mentioned that you were running filters like WP AutoP within the actual template tag. Is there any way for a theme that's written with Timber, Timber templates to have all of the normal action hooks that you would expect to find in a WordPress theme, such as the ones on the header and the footer that plugins normally tie into? Is there any issue with using those if you're using this templating system? There definitely is an issue in the sense that I would call this at like point one <coughs> release. So what I found is the most important ones in that are the footer, like WP head and WP footer. So I made sure that those were a part 
of kind of the that based on HTML. So when you're like, when, when you are looking for like the right way to include scripts, include styles, and it's supposed to route to one of those, it has a place and it's not asking you to redo it. There are definitely others that um, I have yet to integrate, but I make sure to, to get those big ones to start off with. And I, I would like to eventually, um, I think a big limitation I would say right now is this does, this plays very well with itself, but may not play well with others, including in terms of like, um, you know, the YouTube plugin or something is counting on this one thing being there that might not be there right now. Um, so what I am really working on over the next couple months maybe is figuring out what those things are so that it would play nicely with other plugins without a whole lot of additional engineering. Have you seen any drop in performance? I assume that the JavaScript has the regex to find everything? Or? Well, there, it's not JavaScript. It's all PHP side. So there is a performance hit for sure. Like when I was doing it, it took up about an extra two megabytes of RAM for a page. So the jump was from like maybe like six or seven with like 2010 to like eight or nine with using this. Um, in terms of queries, it was about the same. Again, maybe a few more queries, but it was in that kind of safe zone where, you know, I feel comfortable using it on, at least right now, our production <laughs> stuff. And also, once it's behind back cache or super cache or quick cache, at that point, it would be transparent. It wouldn't matter. But it's definitely, you know, everything costs something. My feeling is that the cleanliness and the ease is worth that trade-off right now. Hey. Okay. What about how is this escaping? What uh, is HTML escaping and attribute escaping? Best practices for WordPress are you use best attribute as HTML, whatever you're uploading, depending on its context. Yeah. So do that automatically? Yeah, that's one of the awesome things because that's something that um, I have heard frequently is like the number one thing that comes back and like the VIP team is like reviewing code is like you didn't escape, you didn't escape, you didn't escape. Um, by default, Twig escapes everything. So that problem is solved for you in kind of like the dumbest way possible. It just does it automatically. So you can set a default escaping mechanism um, or you can like on a per variable basis turn that off. So using, for example, if for some reason you didn't want to escape something, you can do pipe raw, and that tells Twig, okay, for some reason, maybe, for some very good reason that I don't know about, this person doesn't want this particular variable escaped, and it won't be escaped. And of course, you can turn that on its head, and by default, make nothing escaped, and if you do pipe E, it will use the default escape method, you can even get more detailed, and you can tell it what escaping method you want. Uh, so it gives you a lot of options. I set it at its defaults, with, which is escape everything unless I tell you not to. So, so this is almost more of an upstanding question, but if you do this for all your projects, how do you feel about single page applications? Do you tend to not go that route? We do single page apps, but I think single page apps and WordPress, I don't know if those would necessarily jive because at that point, you're basically taking away right. everything. You're, you're reducing WordPress to, I guess, the point of like an admin interface, which definitely has its qualities. But at that point, like when we're doing that stuff, it's all JavaScript and we're probably doing a single page app because it is so different from a kind of like normal website. WordPress is great, you know, when we're doing something like a blog or in our case like a news website where you it functions more like you know a read and content website than it does something with like you know lots and lots of interaction it's definitely not twitter cool so yeah if there's anything else come talk to me after you, again you can find me in all kinds of these web places and more um, and again, we're also looking for designers. So if you or you know someone is looking as well, definitely come uh, talk to me too. So thank you again. Really appreciate it.